Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Shaman King Flowers episode number four reaction. So the previous episode, um, two things happened. First of all, um, the battle uh, was taken over by um, Alumi. I think that's her name. Yeah, um, you know, the third uh, Anna. So it was taken over by her and she helped us out, saved us from that whole situation. And yeah, you know, that thing. And uh, later on, the most interesting part is Tamau went and <laughs> went to the main headquarters and just destroyed, destroyed the whole place and threatened them, you know, the Asakura, like, you know, branch family and said that, yeah, you know what, you gotta stop all of this. And uh, yeah, you know, they were, they had to pull, put in a ceasefire. Also, um, they, uh, the, 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 the family head, they have said um, both Johanne and... Um, I've again forgotten her name, the sister, uh, Johanne and her to go and attend that school. So, you know, for now, everything is peaceful. And uh, yeah, and uh, so that's literally what happened. That was a crazy episode. And uh, yeah, so let's see how it goes. And uh, obviously he transferred, obviously Johanne transferred to <laughs> Hannah's uh, class. So there you go. They, they probably become friends now. Now, another thing, I had a misconception about this. I thought the first Anna is actually our Anna, that is Anna, Asakura Anna, uh, that was a mistake. That, uh, the second Anna is actually like uh, uh, Anna, like uh, uh, Asakura Anna, like our, the Anna that we know. That's the second Anna. The third is her, Alumi. And just because of that, it, that brought in another misconception. I thought that she was the uh, disciple of our Anna, that is the Anna we saw in uh, Shaman King, that is, uh, you know, Hana's mother. That's what I thought. So no, she is the disciple of the first Anna who we don't know who it is. So that was a big misunderstanding I had. So, you know, thankfully the comment, uh, comments were able to clarify that for me. So yeah, uh, just something that I wanted to mention. All right, let us begin uh, episode number four. Um, so yeah, I'll be... Yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it whichever is your preference, and let's begin. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, this happened. There you go. <laughs> I love how the, those two are just shivering in fear. Oh boy. Oh. There you go, his face. I think he's going to decline. Yep. Hmm. 
Yeah. Nope, he said that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you shouldn't fight. Come on. Stop it. Really? <clears throat> Lance, that's a sword. Wow! Wait, did he just... Yeah... <laughs> yeah. Lack battle experience, I see. Makes sense, you know. Oh. Damn, he's not even moving. Wow, simplistic attacks. Wow, he just... Oh, he stopped at the nick of time. Yeah, before he got slashed, he just stopped. Wait, really? Oh, oh, he actually slashed him. Hmm. Hmm. True. That's why he was holding back. <laughs> well, that was he caught off guard, you know. Well, yeah, obviously she. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Uh. Wow. Is this is this how he died? Uh. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. <What? laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, someone's keeping an eye on them. Okay, who's this? Alright, this guy, we see him in the opening. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Ah. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, 
He's like, but I'm excited for it. He never has. <laughs> no, he has never. Okay. <laughs> wow. I don't like scare him too much. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, he literally hit the nail. <laughs> That's one way to say it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and he had no opportunity to get them. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Will fade eventually. But <laughs> I don't think it's going to fade that eventually. Oh no. I was literally saying in the previous episode there's one seat open. So Oh no, she's she's gonna say this. Oh my god, she's going to be like <laughs> she, Okay, she's saying every she literally said everything <laughs> Where did they get the glow sticks from? Well, there you go. <laughs> Here we go. She actually blabbered out everything. What the? <laughs> Oh no, bro. <laughs> Wait, she's here? Wait, wouldn't she attend the same school? Oh, she's a teacher. Or oh, wait, no, she's not. I guess but you know oh okay wow this is <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh oh my god wait <laughs> why is how Oh my god, what is happening? The boss of the school?
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so she went to that school? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. She went to a different school. Okay, please don't. Just, just <laughs> move on. Wow, this is crazy. Yeah, let's go. Let's bunk school, you know. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Oh, they still fight. Oh, they're training. Wait, you also don't know? I thought I'm the one would know. Because you know he has been with Yo and everything. Bro, commenters. Hmm. Flower of Maze. We've been hearing about this. Wow. Really? What is that? Oh, that's YV. Um, uh, you know the the name we saw of the god in the first episode. I forgot the name. I think it's literally written. <coughs> wow. That's <laughs> KJFC. Wait, is that? John Mall. <laughs> oh my god, I'm in the mall so didn't really... But wait, isn't I'm in the mall always with um Hannah? If Hannah knows <coughs> 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 <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like reacting to everything. <clears throat> oh, it's drop. It's gonna drop. Come on. <clears throat> it's gonna drop. Hello. Oh no. Oh my god. That is just. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh wait wait how is he how is she here isn't she at school <laughs> what <clears throat> socializing wow
Damn. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> Real mom. Ah, I see, I see. Well, that's why she's here, I guess. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, so they met before? Okay. She probably doesn't remember. <laughs> there. <clears throat> oh no, there's someone there. Well, those two, like we saw. Never, uh, not properly. Okay, that is. So they never even met properly. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> oh, wow, that is crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. That is actually true. That <laughs> If you remember, I think it was Bruh. What? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, where, where is he even, he, where is, oh, I'm guessing that's probably renting, I don't think she will be, she's, what, why, here we go, you think these guys can do anything to him? Yeah, bullying. Okay. Red donkey, what? Hmm. Well, technically, she's not really attacking him, you know. Exactly. That is why she asked them for help because Bruh Come on Hana can handle himself. Wait, I'm the one who isn't here. Oh no, they're shopping. They're shopping. Oh wait, no, they actually got, oh my god. Stone, wait, um. Spine cracker. Okay, yeah, this is be a bit of a problem, but you know, let's see. Wait, where's Oboro? Um, maybe the same thing happened to him as well.
Hmm. That is it. Right. That was this episode, episode four of Shaman King Flowers. Now, um, today's episode was basically getting introduced to another transfer student. Not introduced, like we already know her. But, you know, like everyone in the class or school getting introduced to her. And uh, yeah, I, I literally said in the previous episode, I was like, I thought, I think there's another seat open. So that another student will probably transfer here. <laughs> literally, that's, that's exactly what happened in today's episode. <laughs> right. And uh, so, yeah, um, Alumi is here in the school. And uh, there you go. Also, uh, a few other things happened. For example, um, Luca. Yeah, that's her name. I need to remember her name. Uh, Luca is in the other school where this guy, I think the, the, the third generation of Ryu, um, I've forgotten his name, but you know, he is there, he is in that school, and he's the Bancho of that school, so you know, and uh, <laughs> Luca's literally like, oh, like, you know, like, can you kill him for me or something like that, she said. So there you go that's that we get to see a new character here uh, here um this guy who he kind of looks like um johanne a lot you know if you if you look at him it's just just if you look at him you can see that he looks like a grown-up johanne um you know a tall grown-up johanne that's literally what who he looks like so i do wonder if he has some connection with um you know the uh, house like you know the asakura branch family or something However, we did see in his hand there was that card where it was written YVS. I think like the the name that uh, we saw in the first episode of Shaman King Flowers. You know that um, person who came in front of How and was talking about, about like you know like peace and stuff like that. That person, that 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 Shaman King. The I think like the first Shaman King or something like that. They said as far as I can remember. So yeah, that's I'm guessing that's the name. Either way, um, yeah, that's happening over there. Another important thing we got to know that apparently, um, Alumi, she, now, like I said, I had a misconception in the previous episode. My misconception was that I thought, um, I thought that, yeah, I thought that Anna was her teacher and Anna was the first Itakono Anna. That's what I thought. Turns out I was wrong. The first Itakono Anna is someone else. Anna Asakura is the second Itakono Anna. And she is the third Itakono Anna. So her teacher is not Hana's mom. That is Anna Asakura. It's not her. Her teacher is the first Anna. Who I don't think we know who that is. And here she confirms it. So she says... That she has met her, she has met the second Itakuno Anna, that is Hana's mom, and she even got permission for her. And I guess it makes sense because, <clears throat> you know, like, um, like I should have realized that <clears throat> Anna, like my misconception that Anna was the first Anna, like, and I should have realized that's a misconception because if you think about it, like, she, if she's third, if Alumi is third, um, then. Anna, that is um, Asakura Anna, she must be second because, you know, like, like the age difference. As far as I can remember, Anna was very young when she had Anna. So, like, the age difference is probably 13 to 14 years between her and Anna. And that would make sense if Alumi is Anna number three, while Hana's mom is Anna number two. It would make sense. It would kind of fall into place. <clears throat> Something like that. Right. So, but she kind of confirmed here that she did meet her mother, his mother. She also did get his perm her permission. And, you know, like stuff like that. And she also said that her mom, like, <clears throat> Hana's mom also kind of, you know, kind of taught her a few things. So there you go. Um, now, another thing, I think I have forgotten this, but when they said that, uh, like, when um, Johanna was talking about how Anna has, is feared, like, his mother is feared extremely by his family, and how, how they used to say that Anna is someone who has kicked even God in his balls, kicked God in the balls, 
So <clears throat> this part I cannot properly remember, but there's a vague recollection, which is you know kind of making me think that yeah, this actually did happen in Shaman King, didn't it? As far as I can remember, did this happen? I feel like I have a vague recollection. She did slap how I do remember that. She did slap how I do remember that clearly. But did this happen or? Am I actually, like, it's kind of hazy in my head. I cannot remember properly. I do remember Anna slapping how. That's, that I remember. But this one, I'm not really 100% sure, you know, if that actually happened. But let me know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> that whole thing. And you can see that, um, like, Johanna is obviously all cool with, you know, um, um, what's his name? Hana now. And she's kind of, he's like kind of his friend and everything. However, now, uh, not now, sorry, what's his name? Her name? Um, Luca, yeah, Luca. Luca is just completely crazy. She, she wants to, like, completely eliminate Hana from this world. And I feel like this could easily be, like, resolved if Johanna is like, come on, sister, like, stop it. We're good friends now. I, I feel like that one sentence, if, she, if he says that to Luca and says that, come on, sister, stop it, like, you know, like we're good friends now and he's my one and only friend. I wouldn't like it if you try to hurt him or something like that. If he says, I'm sure Luca will stop it. But, you know, like she's, she just cannot <laughs> stop. And uh, that is why she even like, you know, took the help of this dude and even took like Amidamaru, like froze Amidamaru. And now it's a bit of a problem because, you know, I don't know how much actual physical training Hana has had um however he is full on his own now he has to actually fight physically against this dude and um wait didn't they just say i think in literally in the previous episode that tamao actually taught hana like not only like how to use amidamaru but also like a normal like physical training and physical like you know like training that she gave him as far as i can remember if that's the case, then I think he can handle himself, but we'll have to wait, wait and see, you know, how this goes. Hmm. Um, yeah. Right, so, <laughs> yeah, that was what happened in today's episode. Great episode, and uh, yeah. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. So, it turns out, Alumi actually knows Hana from probably something that happened in their childhood. However, Hana doesn't remember that. You know, so something like that, it turns out, you know, like, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was that. <laughs> I love that part when <laughs> Almi comes in and, <laughs> that was, that part was funny when Hana was like telling Johanne that, you know what, this is going to happen. You're a transfer student. Everyone's going to hound you with questions, you know, where you're from, where's that eye patch from, where, why is, is your hand in a, you know, like a bandage and all that. And, you know, that's actually true, you know, obviously that happens. However, the timing was so bad, you know, and in a weird, like, in a, in a it's sad to think that, not sad to think, but it's sad to kind of realize that um, Johanna was actually looking forward to it. But then in comes um, Alumi and completely, like, just destroys that whole perspective by her being the center of attention. And I'm pretty sure that actually would have happened, you know, like people would have come and asked him questions. But, but, you know, like, Alumi became, like, in a, a big, even a bigger, like, you know, like, a force who came in with such a, you know, like, such a positive, like, you know, like, you know, like, a, a, like a, such a positive attitude and just completely with a new energy she came in. And <laughs> his presence completely went down immediately. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and he was kind of looking forward to it. If you saw, he was kind of, like, happy. He was a, a little bit afraid, but he was happy as well. He was like, oh... So, First time something like this was going to happen. But yeah, unfortunate. And everything that Hana told Johanne to not say, <laughs> um, Alumi comes in and literally tells every single thing. Every single thing that Hana told Johanne not to say. She says everything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, not only that, she even like drags in Johanne into the whole situation as well. Oh my god. Right. And oh, another thing I wasn't expecting. I actually thought that Luca will be in the same school, you know, as them. But she's in that other school. So I do wonder why they decided to put her in that school while 
while you know like Johanna in this school I, I do wonder why like couldn't they have attended the same school I don't know I'm not really sure um either way <clears throat> yeah and it is funny because that whole th section was like you know like that that school was like a school filled with delinquents like you know like and the bancho of that school was him um <laughs> and he's like you know the school leader kind of thing and wait th is this something that actually happens in japan like i i like you know obviously i've seen a lot of animes and played a lot of visual novels where this is like a thing where you know like like a school like filled with delinquents and there's like in, in each school like there's like a banjo you know like he's like the like the leader or something and you know he like always wears like a gakuran i think that's what they call it you know that little jacket thing and it's always written in their back like something and uh, they like have this kind of turf wars or something like that against other schools and stuff and like they're like literally like the kind of like the yakuza of that school kind of like that you know like under them like everything they are uh, like you know they're responsible for the whole school's protection and everything and protecting them from other schools and stuff you know and some banchos are good you know good natured some banchos are kind of bad natured you know it depends on all that is this like <laughs> i'm pretty sure this is over exaggerated i'm sure it does happen but not in such an over exaggerated fashion in reality you know because because yeah it, it makes like i'm pretty sure like anime and visual novels kind of over exaggerate the whole thing um but i'm guessing this actually does happen like the schools does have like like a leader in the background or something who are like you know kind of like that maybe i don't know i'm just you know <laughs> yeah anyway so that is it that was my reaction to episode four now let me talk about this episode scene by scene um in the first section uh we get to see that whole conversation between oboro and aminamaru and here you can see oboro is the type of um guardian spirit who is like oh let's have some fun you know like uh, obviously we can we shouldn't like like uh, like the fact that we're fighting we shouldn't let the higher uh, uh, like you know our, our family know about it so everything will be fine if we keep quiet about it and you know we can just have fun a little bit you know while Amida was like no i'm not like that like you think this is fun obviously not and he says a very good thing a very good line he says he says that my sword is something that was given to me for me to protect myself and go through a hellish like you know like um a hellish situation something like that he says where is that part um here we go the katana was a means of surviving the hell of this existence and you know like and you can see obviously for amida maru the katana is something that he uses to protect himself and his master obviously and fighting is just a means to that he doesn't fight because of like you know like having fun or just like you know as a little game kind of thing he doesn't do that you know he fights to for a certain for, for protection and for that he uses his sword and that's all you know so for him overall's way of looking at it like oh let's just have fun was very bizarre he was like i'm not like that i'm i don't do stuff like that and you know like that was a very good line and you can see as he says like Oboro, you might be strong, however you have so less experience, you know. And it is true, Amida Maru fought everything, like you know, alongside Yo. That whole thing he fought against. How he fought against so many strong people. So his experience is through the roof, you know, literally. <laughs> He's like the level hundred weapon that uh, you have used to defeat the demon lord, and that has been passed on to like a like a level ten character kind of like that because obviously like you know hana might be strong but you know he is very new to this so hana's like that level 10 character who's using a level 100 like weapon which has been used to defeat the demon king or something like that you know so it's that and he has so much experience under his belt unlike oboro yeah and another thing oboro kind of says which was interesting so he was from the era where um the katana was on the verge of dying out I'm guessing this is during the Meiji Restoration or something. Because, you know, like, as far as I can remember, like, there was, like, a, um, a, a what was it called? The, the arms, like, you know, like, they, they used to, like, I think it was in the, during the Meiji Restoration that they decided to ban, 
like katana or like you know like weapons as far as i can remember what was it called it's called like um uh, there's a certain term they used for it you know where like they i, I forgot it like we've seen that in gintama in roni kenshin as well you know where they are like yeah like samurai the day of samurai the age of samurais are over you know like like katana has been banned you know stuff like that any type of weapon has been banned that kind of thing so i'm guessing he's from that era like the meiji restoration era as he's saying the katana was on the verge of dying out and yeah he says like one day i was a little too drunk and uh, i paid a visit to a former comrade of mine and his comrade became one of those people who he you know like who just sits down and like does like he became one of like the the political leaders i'm guessing money has made my comrade fat and ugly there you go um <clears throat> yeah I'm, you know what i think this is the major restoration most probably as you can see <clears throat> and yeah and obviously guns were introduced and yeah he's like guns guns and guns and he was like i just got fed up with that and that's where he died and he says like geez how did things get so boring before like using our sword and fighting meant putting our life on the line or soul on the line and now it's like freaking guns you just stand there and shoot you don't even have to have proper training for it or do anything or threaten your life you can just just kill someone with a with just one trigger so and he's like how did that happen this happen and you know like from when did we go from putting our lives online and fighting to this and uh, yeah so He's like, you know what, whatever, you know, I'm feeling better now, it's fine. And Amidama was like, also very sympathetic about this whole thing. And then he's like, oh, Amidama, you know, you, you're a pretty strong samurai, you know, like you're an ancient samurai. You know a lot of things. Uh, can you teach me? And Amidama was like, really, me? And they're kind of like, <laughs> like, you know, kind of becoming friends and everything. And yeah, while all of that is happening, here we get to see this guy. I don't know who he is, but he is looking at them through a telescope and talking to someone, I don't know who that is, that thing, whoever he's talking to, is a triangle, isn't it? With an eye. That's what I saw. I, I, I can see the silhouette here. He's literally a triangle with two legs, I think, and an eye. I don't know, whatever he is. He's talking to someone, and he's like, yeah, and he, he kind of implies here that he wants to separate Amidamaru and um, um, Hana. And it'll be well, well worth doing it. Um, yeah, okay. So that's that. Next, we get to see Hana gives her his advice to Johanne. And he's like, ah, you know, you're the transfer student. This is going to happen. That is going to happen. Be very careful. And Johanne was very happy because, you know, from the inside, he was like, you know what? Stuff like this has never happened. I've never experienced stuff like this. It'll be good. But then they go in. <laughs> okay, this part was so funny because... They come in, I wasn't expecting this, you know, like they come in, in the, in the class and he, and I thought what was going to happen, I, I thought how this was going to go was like, oh, since uh, Hannah told him all of these things and, uh, and he's kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to do anything out of line. Let me keep my everything to myself. I thought how it was going to go is like every people will come and probably ask him a lot of questions and he's going to go along with it and Hannah will be like, what the hell? I just told you not to do it. I thought this was how it was going to go. This whole section caught me so off guard because I thought that's how it was going. And it literally went in a different direction because he comes in and the teacher is just standing there. And I'm like, wait, where, where is this going? And the teacher is like, oh, you know what? There has been another transfer student. And I'm like, oh my God. And yeah, in comes uh, Alumi. And uh, she comes in and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm Alumi from Amer America. My last name is Number, and she literally says every single thing that Hana told Johanne not to say. Every single thing. Even dragged in Johanne into it, you know, talked about <laughs> um, uh, how, uh, what's his name? Hana, like, you know, like, I'm pretty sure he, she talked about Hana liking, uh, you know, like, big boobs because uh, of... Uh, how he was commenting on her being a washboard or something like that. That's why she brought that up here. Also talks about BL and like every single thing. She literally speaks about every single thing and every single person is now looking at them. For different reasons. 
<laughs> well, over there, Luca is in this school and the Bancho, and he's like, damn, you know, who is this girl? I like her. And, <laughs> okay, this part was hilarious. You know why? Because this guy, he literally thinks of a scenario in his head, and he's like, oh, this girl, I think she must have gone through these, these things in her life, you know? Okay, uh, I'm going to read this part. This part is hilarious. Um, <laughs> everyone's like, what the hell, Rusan? Like, she's crazy. And he's like, ah, you idiot. There's obviously some deep reason behind Luca san being like that. And he's like, yeah, you know what? The way she talks is a lot like in anime and light novels. <laughs> everyone's like, what, are, what do you mean by light novels? He's like, ah, she must have been a, led a lonely life without any friends. And they're showing these weird, like, scenes of... <laughs> it's probably his imagination. Uh, and he's like, yeah, basically, she's retreated from reality into the 2D world like a lost kitten. I guess because the way she's talking, he literally thought that that's why. <laughs> what do you mean by the 2D world? Okay, right. Anyways, and he is like, yeah, you know what? Like... My friends also used to laugh at me. Uh. <laughs> and he's like, I got picked on a lot too. No one has a right to interfere with our dreams and adventures in the 2D world. He's literally an otaku. What the hell? <laughs> and he's like, they show the, the whole princess how that whole thing. Oh my God. And he's ah, uh, that's why I want to protect her from the bastards in the real world who want to drag her down. <laughs> Bro thinks he's a light novel uh, manga main protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Uh, right. Okay, so he goes to her and he's like, oh, like my name is, okay, what's his name? Ryuji Ichihara, yeah. And uh, it's like, if, I'm, if you have any trouble, tell me. And she's like, all right, you know what? Okay, I'm just going to tell you now. I want you to kill someone. And he's like, what? <laughs> right. Now, next scene, we get to see Hana being absolutely, like, like losing his mind because of the whole Alumi situation. And, uh, you know, and he's like, you know what? Let's just go. Let's go to a mall. And Yo, uh, Johanna is like, what's the mall and he's like come on you'll see come with me and johan is very happy because obviously she has invited him to go to a mall i'm the manu and overall also looking forward to it and uh, yeah so later on we get to see again this guy looking through like a like the the telescope and he talks about the flower of maize and stuff like that and he's like yeah we need to bring them like you know down as soon as possible and uh, yeah, and he has like a card. Like I said, the card has the name on it. So yeah. Anyways, um, shopping mall, and uh, yeah, there you go. Everyone's very excited. Aminda Manu and Obro goes on to do a little sightseeing, window shopping, while Hana and uh, Yohane go and eat takoyaki. And this part is hilarious, where Yohane is trying to eat the takoyaki, but he's so fascinated by it that it's dropping, and. Hana tries, like, you know, feeds him, and, <laughs> and, uh, and Alum is literally there in the background, and he's like, she's like, what the hell are you two doing? Like, bunking school and doing this? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> right. And she talks about her situation, and she's like, I'm Shaman uh, Anna Daitaku third. And she talks about her mother here, that I've received instructions from your real mother, um, she approved our engagement and uh, Hannah's like, how do you, like, you know, like, we've never even met. However, she's kind of like whispering like, oh, no, we have actually met before. So, yeah, I'm guessing Hannah doesn't remember. Either way, he, she punches him and like leaves. And she also warns them not to keep Amida Maru or Oboro away from them because things might be difficult. <laughs> Certain situations might happen which might, you know, like endanger them. So after that, Johanne talks about how Anna the Itako, the, uh, Anna Itako the second has been feared so much in his family that everyone says that if I, I, if you encounter Anna, just run. That's literally what they tell him. 
and uh, yeah while you uh, while hana is like i don't really know much about my mother um and uh, where, where is that part oh yeah this part where she, he says like uh, like anna even kicked god in the god in the balls like i said i don't properly remember this section if this actually happened but i do remember anna slapped how that that i remember but yeah um okay so here hana is like wait a minute so i am afraid of tamau and i don't know what type of relationship tamau and halumi would have however uh, 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 tamau is under my mother instruction so the hierarchy is literally anna is the highest and she is anna's disciple kind of so he's like wait i'm screwed if i get married to her this is going to be a repeat <laughs> oh my god okay so here's the thing i don't i cannot find that section where he says that um i never met my mom properly you know hana kind of says that that i've never met my mom properly so wow this is crazy so that means after giving birth you know when she was very young probably anna and yo had to leave probably because of some kind of a reason with what is happening and kept tamao you know there and gave like you know hana's responsibility to her and they had to go for their thing and so that is why she doesn't even probably remember her mom prop his mom properly so he doesn't even remember her that much that is crazy i wasn't expecting that though i do know that she's not here but i thought they actually knew each other and met each other and you know but no that's not even that he, he doesn't even remember her that's crazy right anyways um after that you can see <laughs> when hana's like oh i cannot go back to my uh, like you know house yo johan is like oh like you know like will you, will you come with me then to my place and he says like oh uh my sister will also be happy to see you for a few reasons okay here's the thing i don't understand this part why does he say that his sister will be happy to see him is it because the fact that his sister wants to kill him is that why she would be happy that that hana is there very close to her so that she can literally like attack him is that why i don't know but anyways um yeah uh, immediately um luca comes in with a ryu and luca probably like luca told him some false narrative talk probably lied to him said how she was bullied or whatever by hana and ju is like there's one thing i cannot allow bullying and i'm going to teach you which makes sense always because as he said he was picked on as a kid you know because he loved anime he he was bullied and now he doesn't want anyone to go through that that's why he's mad he's like yeah but <laughs> the fact that he's literally getting manipulated <laughs> that's the sad part here <laughs> but anyways um he's like yeah i'm going to i'm going to teach you a lesson here and johan is like come on sister stop it yeah. um and lucas like yeah i'm not really lifting a finger i'm keeping my promise you know they're doing it it's an accident which is i guess true in a sense that he's she's not really doing anything but either way when yohana uh, hana tries to call in amidamaru amidamaru is not coming why she has frozen amidamaru or something she has done like petrified him or something and now ryu has attacked him i do wonder how this is going to go you know um like i said i do not remember if they mentioned hana has physical training but i'm pretty sure i do think they mentioned that tama also trained him like in martial arts or something like that i think like you know like to physically fight i don't remember properly in one of the previous episode i think something like that was mentioned but let's wait and see next episode will you know probably show us whether he is whether he is ready for this fight you know but he in the ending thing he kind of seemed he was sweating and everything because you know uh so maybe not let's let's see Either way that was it that was my reaction to episode 4 of Shaman King Flowers that was a great episode and uh, yeah let's see where this goes so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out that is it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys um next week with another episode of Shaman King until then goodbye and have a nice day